Hand knitting has a long history and an early reference to it in England was in the 15th century. However, in the late 18th century, hand knitting was often a secondary occupation for villagers and shepherds whilst looking after their flocks. Machine knitting was invented in 1589 by a clergyman, the Reverend William Lee, living in the village of Culverton near Nottingham. But it was not until the early 17th century that he and his brothers developed a machine of commercial importance. Because if Queen Elizabeth I would not give them a patent, they had to go to France to establish a commercial enterprise. The use of this hand frame, as it was called, by stockingers became an important rural industry in the East Midlands in the 19th century. Such a machine would have been in the living room of the stockingers' cottages. These are examples of such cottages at Calverton, showing the typical long windows to allow in as much light as possible. In addition to the hand frame, the wife would sew up the stockings and the children wind the yarn. This hand frame is one of a number now in working condition at the Ruddington Framework Knitters Museum near Nottingham and shows clearly the coordination of hands and feet needed. Knitting, of course, is not the only method of fabric production. We can describe four main types of traditional fabrics, which are shown here. But it is not until one takes a closer look that the details become apparent. Here we have a woven fabric where the yarns pass over and under one another. Warp knitting, where the yarns are formed into a series of interlocking loops. And weft knitting, where the yarns are again formed into a series of interlocking loops, but of a different form. And finally, twist lace, where one set of yarns is twisted around another set. If we look at loop drawings of the two separate systems of knitting, we see that warp knitting has loops which are formed in succession in the warp or vertical direction by each needle being supplied with an individual yarn. And weft knitting has loops which are formed in succession horizontally in the weft direction by all the needles with only one yarn needed. Knitted fabrics, as we have seen, are made of arrays of loops which fall naturally into rows and columns. The rows in the horizontal direction are called courses, while the columns in the vertical direction are called whales. This program is specifically interested in weft knitting. I should think all of you are familiar with hand knitting, and you may well have encountered two other kinds of knitting. French knitting, usually carried out by children, and home machine knitting. Home machine knitting uses latch needles, and these are also the needles most commonly used in the knitting industry. We shall now look at some of the basic elements of weft knitting. The plain knitted fabric, sometimes called stocking stitch, has all its loops facing in the same direction. As a result, the fabric has a back and a front which look different. Thus the first fact about a fabric is established, and you can see the difference in the fabrics and in the piece of yarn unrolled from the fabric. A simple straight knitting machine, like this home machine, produces the plain knitted fabric we have already seen. For each traverse of the carriage that carries the yarn across, one more row or course of knitting is added. The productivity of this type of machine 
is limited by the speed of traverse of the carriage and the need for it to slow down and then come to a stop as it reverses its direction. If the needle bed is bent into a circle, the yarn can always travel in the same direction and so productivity can be increased. We can use this simple machine to see how loop formation actually happens. The raised needles have an old loop below the latch. These needles are also collecting the new yarn into the hook of the needle. As the needles move down, the old loop slides up the needle and begins to close the latch, and hence trapping the new yarn under the latch. The needles continue their downward journey and the old loop slides over the closed latch and the hook and the new yarn is formed into a loop. The needles begin to rise and the new loop slides down the needle opening the latch as it does so. The sequence is now ready to begin again. A circular machine also allows an increase in the number of feeder points that is, points where additional yarns are fed into the machine. The productivity is increased in direct proportion to the increase in the number of feeders. In modern machines, a hundred or more feeders can be packed around a 30-inch diameter cylinder, giving a hundred times the production of a single feeder machine of the same size. Once you have several feeders around the machine, you can feed differently coloured yarns to the different feeders and so produce the variety of stripe effects. As well as stripes, pattern and texture effects can be obtained in weft knitted fabrics, either by using different yarns as here, or by modifying the loop shapes that make up the fabric. Let us look at some of the possibilities of modifying loop shapes. Here again is the basic loop that makes up the plain knitted fabric, shown on the left. The first thing we can do is to mesh the loop in the opposite direction to give a purl stitch. By changing the frequency of meshing the loop in the opposite direction, differing effects can be produced. For example, here is a fabric made with alternate plain and purl courses. Note the appearance is the same on each side. It can be arranged that